Hello, my name is Dr. Sheldon Yao and we're going to be demonstrating how to approach a postpartum patient. What I'd like to do first is to address the thoracic inlet first. Most times postpartum patients have a lot of edema, so in treating the thoracic inlet we're helping to improve lymphatic drainage. I'll usually come over to the top of the bed, find the first ribs and keep my fingers gently over the first rib and the shoulders and apply a little gentle lateral traction and this helps to open up the thoracic inlet and allow for improved terminal lymph drainage. Usually holding this for 30 seconds to a minute will allow the tissue to soften up and help remove any restrictions to lymphatic drainage. From here, since I'm up by the head of the bed, I'll get my fingers underneath to the suboccipital space, treat the OA, and treat the suboccipital region with a gentle suboccipital release. This is a very gentle technique and it helps to treat um, the OA helps to um, address any parasympathetic innervation, uh, any restrictions on the vagus nerve. And again, just holding this till I feel a softening of the tissues. I like to come down and then do some articulatory technique on the cervical spine and on the soft tissue of the cervical spine on both sides. And then continue my way down into the thoracic spine and looking at the rib cage. A lot of times there may be regions of facilitation, especially the upper thoracics, sometimes the edema, sometimes from um, the um, increase in strain um, during labor. There might be a lot of musculoskeletal restrictions along the entire spine. So getting your hands underneath, performing some gentle paraspinal inhibition, some rib raising where I'm just lifting my fingers anteriorly and adding a little lateral traction. This helps to disengage the rib cage and soften up the muscles underneath my fingers. A lot of times you'll find increased restrictions along the thoracolumbar region, so kind of getting your hands in that thoracolumbar region, sometimes you get your fingers midline and apply a superior lift just along the spines and that's going to help the different junctions. I like to look at the 12th rib and make sure that the posterior attachments of the diaphragm aren't restricted. And it's important to really look at the hip and how the psoas match muscle attaches along the lumbar spine into the hip. Coming underneath the lumbar spine, I'll apply the same paraspinal inhibition to release any restrictions along the lumbar spine. And then coming midline, I could treat the sacrum. In our study, what we found was that a lot of our postpartum patients had a lot of lumbar single somatic dysfunctions, some type two dysfunctions there. Um, bilaterally flexed sacrums and a lot of SI dysfunction. So um, using some very gentle techniques we were able to decrease some of these restrictions and allow for uh, improved musculoskeletal motion and movement. I like treating the SI joint by getting my fingers medial to the anonymous into the SI joint and I'll take my hands and usually what I'll do is just internally rotate the hip till I feel that SI joint gap. And I'll hold that until I feel a little bit of a release underneath my fingers. Another way to treat the hip and the SI joint is to articulate the hip by um, slowly taking the hip and placing it into flexion, abduction, and external rotation. And I'm compressing through the knee into my monitoring hand and the SI joint. And then I'll alternate that with flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. So it's doing a faber and fadir motion at the hip to try to increase motion into the SI joint. By utilizing OMT in a postpartum patient, we could help try to restore the patient's uh, natural musculoskeletal uh, structures so that there's improved functioning in lymphatics and decreased restrictions on the nerves and improved mobility to help decrease pain.